بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم سورة ياسين لسن 30 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قيل دخل الجنة قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفر لي ربي وجعلني من المكرمين In our previous session we summarized what the context was here of Surah Yasin. It is set 600 years before the coming of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where Sayyidina Isa Alayhi Salam is about to be raised up uh, to the heaven to Allah Ta'ala and just before that dispatches two messengers on his behalf to a small qariya, a small town in, in some place in Turkey known as Antakya. They reject these messengers and Allah Ta'ala says فَعَزَّزْنَا بِثَالِثِ and Allah strengthens um, these messengers with a third, a thalith who goes there and he meets a man on the on the Aqsa of the Medina the highest part of, of the town, the, the real estate of the town as it were and this man speaks to the messenger and believes these messengers because they uh, provide a, a mu'jiza, a miracle and a mu'jiza is specific to Anbiya prophets, not awliya and they heal his son, and and the the the, the, the surah then beautifully uh, expresses itself in, in the Quranic expression. And from the highest part, the Aqsa of this Medina, and Medina is used here because Medina is considered to be a city. So look at the words here. It's the Ashabul Qariya, the people of a small Qariya, and a Qariya is a small little village. And from the highest part of the Medina, that's the beauty here, telling us he's a wealthy man, he's an influential man, and he doesn't need anything from anybody. He's far away from need. He comes pacing Yas'a, and he tells his people, believe these messengers, they are telling the truth, they want no ajr, they want no reward, they are genuine in what they're doing. And he preaches and he speaks to them. What happens in verse 20, uh, uh, 25? They stone him, they crucify him, and they kill him. And he is dying on ikhlas. And the whole story changes. The next verse is, Qila dukhulil jannah. Immediately enter paradise, the malaika tells this person. So he dies a martyr, a shaheed, and he enters jannah immediately. This is how we learn that a martyr skips the hisab, is not held to account, his faults are overlooked, and he enters paradise immediately. What does he say after he enters paradise? So these words are the words of Habib Najjar, the carpenter. He is speaking now. Allah Ta'ala is telling us his words here. And he says, Ya layta qawmi ya'lamun, if only my people knew. This is our dalil and our proof that someone who has passed away, a shaheed, can still long for his people. Oh my people, if only you knew what I'm experiencing now. Think for a second. If this is the state of a shaheed, what is the state of the awliya? Yet what are the, what is, what are the states of the anbiya? And here we down here with our jahal and ignorance, without studying uh, um, properly, again without being grounded, we are quick to jump to say people are dead and that's it. The Quran is telling us otherwise. It's calling us to a spiritual life that is more alive than year. And what does he say? Bima ghafarali Rabbi. If only they knew what forgiveness I have received from my Lord. Wajalani min al mukramin, and that he has made me of the mukramin. And what's a mukram? A mukram is someone of karama who has been selected for karama. And a karama is only attributed to a wali of the awliya. A mu'jiza, a miracle to the prophets, a karama, breaking the natural order, is gifted to the awliya. And you can't become a wali. A wali, it is chosen. You are chosen as a prophet and you are chosen as a wali. You can make tahajjud till you are blue in the face. You cannot earn that wilaya. It has to be given. So you make dua that Allah chooses us as a wali but you can't become one out of your own. So the door of Nubuwa prophethood is closed, but the door of Karama, Waliya, is open. Uh, okay, 
Then we mentioned there are several points in this verse we need to look at. Number one, the Jannah. Number two, the reality of a sincere person after death. The types of martyrs. Uh, number four, those exempted from being questioned after death. Number five, the states of those who remember death before death. Number six, ikhlas. And number seven, wilaya. So we said this man enters paradise. He dies a martyr. And he sees the bliss. He experiences it. And he longs to tell his people. So firstly, those who have passed on, if they are given a state like this, they can still pray for those here. That's a given year in this verse. Okay, we said paradise, literally, uh, Jannah means Bustan, a garden. And it is referred to as the Darul Thawab, the abode of reward. And it contains eight enormous gates. And according to the Ahli Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Jannah exists already. This is in contrast to the Mu'tazila. The Mu'tazila were a group. In fact, they ruled the Muslim world in the 3rd century. And they don't exist today because of, of the, the profound works written in refuting them. If you study theology, you will learn that the Mu'tazila believed in lots of uh, strange things, but they don't exist today. Okay, so these gates of Jannah, um, number one, there is a gate called Bab Shahadatain. It's the gate of the two testimonies of faith. Basically, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. A quick note here that this tartibia, that the testification of the Creator, must precede the testification of belief in the Messenger. So you can't swap it around. The tartib is important. The Creator before the creation. Um, Ashhadu must be repeated twice. That's the second adab. Ashhadu and Ashhadu. Um, the wow between uh, the two statements. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. Wa Ashhadu. The wow does not have to be repeated a second time. Um, there are about four or five uh, adab included in the shahada. It must be added um, uh, with the tongue so that your belief and your submission is public. If you do not utter it with your tongue, yet you believe in your heart, then the laws of this dunya pertaining to marriage, uh, Muslim marriage, pertaining to being buried with the Muslim's inheritance will not be uh, applied to you. Why? Because you have not made it public. So therefore the tongue is an aid to confirm what is in your heart. Whereas if you uttered it with your tongue, you are accepted as a Muslim and everything applies to you, regardless if you believe in your heart or not. And if you disbelieved in your heart, yet uttered it with your tongue, you are a Muslim on the dunya, but not a Muslim before Allah Ta'ala in the Akhirah. So that's the contrast here. Eh? A poet said it beautifully, uh, where he said, إِنَّ الْكَلَامَ لَفِي الْفُؤَادِ Indeed, speech emanates from the heart. وَإِنَّمَا جُعِلَ عَلَى اللِّسَانِ عَلَى الْفُؤَادِ دَلِيلًا But that which you see stringing forth on my tongue is but an indication of what my heart wishes to express. The first gate is the gate of Bab Shahadatayn. Second gate is known as Bab Salah, the, the, the door of prayer. The third, Bab Siyam, the door of fasting. Uh, the one, two, three. The fourth, Babu Zakah, the gate of charity. The fifth, Babu Al Hajj, the, the door of pilgrimage. Number six, Bab Al Amr Bil Ma'aruf wa Nahi Anil Munkar, the gate of prohibiting evil and commanding the good. And that's a long chapter we'll discuss later on. Babu Silah, the door of keeping family ties, very important. And lastly, Babu Al Jihad, Fi Sabilillah, the gate of struggling against the self in the path of Allah Ta'ala. The other uh, aqwal or opinions from the ulama is that there are four levels um, of levels of Jannah, while others say there are more than four levels of paradise. Now, let's just quickly end of the session with, with the khilaf, the difference of opinion, on the levels of Jannah. Um, one view is that there are seven levels. Sab'a darajat. We don't say darakat. Darakat is for Jahannam. It goes lower and lower and lower. Well, darajat is to ascend. Okay. So there are seven levels, one above the other. And this is according to the Mu'tamad 
of the madhab of the Ash'ari'a. These two madhabs in Tawheed, Maturidi and Ash'aris, they both, uh, it's the same, it's just subtle differences in between. There are four madhabs in, in Fiqh which we stick to, Shafi, Hanafi, the Hanbali and the um, Malikis. And there's two in Tawheed, uh, which is the Ash'aris and the Maturidis, and then there's about 12 Turks in Tawf, and one is for the heart, one is for the body, and one is for the intellect. But uh, let us stick to our topic here. Uh, the highest level is called Firdaus, the highest. And above Firdaus is the Arsh Ar-Rahman, the throne of the merciful. Below Firdaus is a, a, a busta, a garden called Ma'wa, a garden of Ma'wa. And below, and then below that is the abode, the Jannah, the, the abode Darul Khulud, the abode of eternity. And then we have the abode the Darul Na'im, the abode of comfort, then the abode of Adan, and then we have the Darul Salam, the abode of peace, and the Darul Jalal, the abode of majesty. Now the other view, as I mentioned earlier, there are only four levels, since Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, and I'm quoting two surahs now, first is uh, two verses, surah 55 verse 46, Allah Ta'ala says, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ and for the one who truly fears his Lord, there is Jannatan, two gardens. The other verse, verse 62, in the same surah, surah 55, says, وَمِن دُونِهِمَا Jannatan," And uh, besides these two mentioned, there are another two gardens, Jannatan. This view is accepted by most of the ulama, indicating there are four uh, gardens, levels, but just different names to uh, ascribe to them. Others say there's only one Jannah, because, and these descriptions just point to different places in this garden, which the inhabitants will inhabit. It's one place. Basically, in summary, Jannah is the dwelling place of the believers. Khul means abode of eternity, and is applicable to all places in Jannah. Darus Salam is basically the house of peace and likewise applicable to all places in paradise. Darun Naim, the abode of comfort, is also applicable to all places in Jannah. And in this way, some scholars came to the conclusion that it is one Jannah, whereas others interpreted it as separate places. Wasalli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.